Hey, I'm Holly Jackson. And I'm Madeline Patterson. And welcome to Encounter Shawnee Mission. Hey, did you know that our district is over 50 years old? After all these years, SMSD added a new elementary school. Lenexa Hills just had their dedication ceremony. Let's take a look. Lenexa Hills recently had their dedication ceremony. The ceremony is really a meaningful moment in a school's life just because it formally uh, says that this is a school that's a part of the school district and this is a big school district and we're adding a new school and so it's part of the family and the dedication is kind of like a milestone moment. Teachers and students discussed what they like about their new school. I like all the um, comfy chairs and all the space that we had and we have bigger classrooms. My favorite part about teaching at Lenexa Hills is just being a part of opening a brand new school and creating a positive culture. It's been really neat that we kind of started out small, so it just kind of feels like one big family and it's been fun getting to know everybody, all the staff and all the students. All great teachers are trying to help kids succeed and, and yet we have maybe some tools that they don't have. So. We have spaces that some traditional schools don't have, so we have more options for kids to collaborate and to work on their projects. Every student has a genius project and, and a passion project, and uh, it's uh, hopefully really relevant and really project-based learning. With videographer Will Frankel, this has been Olivia Neely reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, those kids sure are lucky to have a brand new elementary school. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Hey, are you hungry? Actually, I am. Why? Well, we should stop by the Rising Star Garden and chomp on some fresh veggies. Great idea. Let's take a look. Rising Star Elementary School has had the great opportunity to put on their own school garden. Mr. Bush, fifth grade teacher, has helped the kids in order to make their garden look as beautiful as it is today. Shawnee Mission's uh, taken initiative of school gardens for uh, the last few years. I've also been a member of the farmer's market for the past 10 years as I'm a third generation farmer. So really I got to meet some of the guys and some of the chefs over at the farmer's market in downtown Overland Park who started doing uh, a big community garden project at the Center for Academic Achievement. So that's where the idea kind of started. Uh, I like the Rising Star Garden because uh, we plant vegetables. My favorite thing that we grow in the garden is the cucumbers because whenever I'm at my dad's, he always makes me cucumbers and they're really good. We plant whatever is available for planting season and that, uh, that harvest season. We work in collaboration as fifth graders with some third grader counterparts um, to teach teach various various things. A fifth grade standard right now is, is ecosystems that we're concentrating on. So that helps us uh, bring those ecosystems to life and actually be able to get hands on. Uh, third grade is also being able to tie that into to, to some of their science standards. Honestly, it has a lot to do with mother nature. I don't really have a magic wand out there that I wave each day uh, that makes that garden uh, do its thing. I think the kids will get a real good sense of teamwork and collaboration some of the academic sides of it also with uh, covering the science standards. It's something that they can do at school that they truly enjoy and they have fun doing it. They really gain a sense of pride when it comes to the garden. Uh, not only are they learning about um, ecosystems and sustainability, they're really learning a lot about health and nutrition and they really they dive in and you can see just the eyes light up when they get to be uh, in charge of something. Uh, they get to be a part of something. They get to care for something from a, a little seed that they plant, or maybe it's a transplant that we've gotten from Kansas City Community Gardens, and they get to watch that grow. With photographer Ashley Naiman, this has been Holly Jackson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, by the sound of that, I bet we have some future farmers on our hands. For sure. When was the last time you participated in a sporting event? Well, the students at Krista McAuliffe had the opportunity to do so at this year's Sportathon. Students were able to take a break from the classroom and get active with an obstacle course, donut toss, and some running. Let's jog on over. <laughs> at Krista McAuliffe Elementary School, students had the opportunity to participate in this year's Sportathon. They've got the, uh, the bounce house this year, which is always a big, fun event for kids. They've got the ring toss in there where they have to try to get the donuts onto the, onto the pole. And then outside they do more like the lapathon where they're running through the front, uh, front lot of the school and on the sidewalk. So those are pretty, and they just kind of rotate. Each class has their 
50 minute specials time that they use for their sportathon day. So they rotate between 25 minutes outside and then 25 minutes in the gym. Students were asked what their favorite part was. Probably the running, because it's fun to run. <laughs> we then asked the principal, Michael Orr, what he would like the students to gain from this experience. Uh, you know, I think the Sportathon is an opportunity for the kids to understand that it's a fundraiser for the school and their time and effort that they put into the fundraising and going out and asking for donations allows them to see what they get back on the other end with the money that they raise. With photographer Charlie Martin, this has been Nick Ship reporting from Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, I really broke a sweat. <laughs> Did you ever ride your bike to elementary school? No, I still have my training wheels. <laughs> <laughs> well, third graders at Sunflower Elementary held their annual bike rodeo to get their bike license. That's awesome. I wish I could have been there. Let's wheel on over. <laughs> third graders at Sunflower Elementary School put their cycling skills to the test in their annual bike rodeo. So um, the third grade bike rodeo is an annual event and every year Officer Larson comes and talks to the third grade about bike safety and all the kids have an opportunity to bring either their bike or a scooter in their helmet and they do a lesson on safety and then the kids have an obstacle course that they go through um, and have a chance to ride their bikes with their friends. Some of the kids told us their favorite part of the bike rodeo. My favorite part of the bike rodeo is the obstacle course because um, it's fun because you get to play with your friends while riding the bike and you get your bike class license. Um, my favorite part of the bike rodeo would be riding your bike because uh, a lot of people don't really get to ride their bikes to school and it, this, this is just really exciting for all the third graders and I'm glad they're all liking it. The bike rodeo teaches the third graders about safety and prepares them for the future. I think it helps get them off on a good foot with safety and um, it teaches them some rules and regulations, especially as they learn to start riding their bikes to school. Um, I think it gets them, you know, focused so that they know how to be safe as they ride to and from school. Uh, they learn how to stop, get off their bikes correctly, uh, get on their bikes correctly at least, um, and they uh, teach them how to, uh, how would you say, uh, watch for safety, watch for vehicles and stuff. With photographer Kamani Alexander, this has been Henry Hamas reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, I might have to finally take those training wheels of mine off. Definitely. Do you like cookouts? Well, the kids at Comanche Elementary do. Comanche gather together to have a family cookout. Let's go join the fun. This is a cookout that our community partners that we have, um, a couple of different churches, the police department, they come work with us throughout the school year, and they come and provide a huge cookout so we can have families come and just have fun. We do usually do this one, one time a year. We used to do it in the spring, but we felt it was just a great way to kick off the school year, so we're having it in the fall. While I'm here, I just walk around, I can interact with kids, it gives me a great opportunity to talk to parents, build that relationship, um, so they get to see me in a fun and social environment, not just always in a school setting. My favorite thing here at the cookout is seeing my old friends from third and fourth grade and getting to sit down and talk to them for once. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of friends over here, and I have my sister that is in high school. I like basically the cookouts that we have and that we have fun. It was a community outreach with the police department, I suppose. I was, I was invited by some church friends to come help serve uh, food to the kids and all, and I, I go to church with some of the kids around here, so I showed up to help out. With videographer Sydney Boyd, this has been Dane Mattis reporting for Encounter Shiny Mission. Wow, that really makes me crave hot dogs and hamburgers. And Don't forget the ketchup. <laughs> right. Don't forget the ketchup. Hey, do you like art? Yeah, although mine might be considered more abstract. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do these kids at the East Antioch Elementary School, only they've put a little twist on it. Let's take a look at their sidewalk chalk art show. <laughs> Chalk art is um, an event during the day with the kids. I guess it is another draw to get parents to come and bring their kids, and I'm sure their kids bug them all day long to come see their, their artwork. 
The Chili Cook-Off is an event for us to raise money for the sixth grade um, graduation party. So we like to get everybody in for the Chili Cook-Off, get them excited about the competition, but then hopefully also buy a lot of sweets for the sixth grade fundraiser. All the winners um, got a basket, and the basket had some spices, some hot sauces, um, some chili pepper themed items um, to make it fun, and, and there were medals for the top three, so there was a bronze, um, silver, and a championship medal. The winners are chosen um, by a panel of judges, and our Overland Park Fire Department um, d volunteered to be the judges. So yeah, my parents were in the competition and my mom won. Awesome basket with spices and a towel and some hot sauce. They came for the art but stayed for the chili. This has been Maddie Van Arsdale with photographer Andrew Tapp reporting for Encounter Sean Mission. Hey, remember in the 1980s when everyone would go rollerblading all the time? No. I was born in the 2000s. <laughs> Me neither, but Overland Park Elementary had a blast of the past with their skate party. Let's roll it over. This year, Overland Park Elementary hosted an amazing skate party. The PTA, though, added a little twist with the class competition. Uh, the Golden Skate is something new that we're doing this year where if they, the classroom that has the most attendees gets to keep the Golden Skate until the next skate party and then they also get a pipe popsicle party. We asked a couple students if they knew about the competition and if they thought they would win. No. Um, because I checked on the list, there's two people that I found so far and the rest only have like one or two. One to zero. My teacher told my class about it, and I saw one of my friends named Ashton. My favorite part about coming to Skate City is that the kids are get, it's a community, and they get to come and skate with their friends and have a good time um, while they're in a safe environment. With photographer Andrew Tabb, this has been Riley Allen, reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, I miss elementary school skating parties. Me too, but I certainly don't miss the bumps and bruises. <laughs> How many people do you know play the ukulele? I don't know. One? Maybe two? Well, Shawnee Mission West has enough ukulele players to have a whole club of them. Let's drum along. I've been doing ukulele for about seven to eight months now. About three years. Four years, I believe, if I do math correctly. <laughs> many schools have drama clubs, math clubs, and environmental clubs. But what most schools cannot admit to having is a ukulele club, a club where kids with one common passion unite to rock out on their tiny guitars. Here at Shawnee Mission West, this club was created by Kasia Wakefield and Gracie Sherrard. Me and my friend Gracie started Ukulele Club when we were sophomores, so this is Ukulele Club's third year. It's a lot of fun. I think it's just given me a lot of happiness after school and like things I'm, hope, I'm hoping to do, even if I've had a tiring day. Ukulele Club welcomes ukulele players of all levels and experience. You can still join even if you've never picked up a ukulele. It's really helpful actually to have all levels of people because we need different parts in the songs and we don't want anybody to feel like they're playing something out of their comfort level. This club gives students the opportunity to make friends and meet new classmates with the same interests. I really benefit, I think, a lot from the social aspect of it, and it's just a lot, it's like a fun group of people that you get to hang around with that all like to play ukuleles, and you get to hear good music and see a lot of different uh, people's music styles and tastes and stuff, and all these different interpretations of different songs or just what they like to listen to. Yeah, they're really good people. Musicians are good people. That's what I've learned. With photographer Kasia Wakefield, this has been Brogan Thomas with Encounter Shawnee Mission. Hey, you okay? I'm gonna have those songs stuck in my head for days. <laughs> well, what's your opinion on drawing? It's pretty cool. I draw a mean stick figure. <laughs> well, the kids love to create drawings of their own. Let's take a look at Pawnee Elementary School's drawing club. At Pawnee Elementary School, while other kids are sleeping in, this group of students is occupied with drawing club. Well, the art club is really important. It's kind of dear to my heart because we had some students last year, they're kind of new to our school, but really interested in art, and I was looking for ways to pull them into uh, the community a little more, so we started an art club, and it was super successful last year, and people were really excited to do it this year. I get to draw whatever I want, and it's really fun. 
it gives me a chance to draw fr freely, get away from class, be with my friends for a little. I really wanted to build relationships with this club, and that was one of the reasons why we started it, because we had kind of like-minded kids that were kind of uh, just like searching for something. They weren't really band kids, they weren't really choir kids, and art was really perfect for them. Um, I think they just sat for hours and hours drawing with each other, and they got really close, so we were glad that they were able to build those relationships. In Drawing Club, the bouncy, lively 5th grade students and the mindful, focused 6th grade students all unite under one roof to express themselves creatively. What I can help them with are things like proportions with the people and the animals and the shading and, and things like that. So I can help them with technique and, and proportions and things like that. I mostly like to use color pencils because then you can do different shades. I think there's so many benefits to art. I mean, not that there's the sharing aspect, but I think there's the creative aspect. I also think uh, it just really builds self-esteem when they're um, drawing. My favorite part is probably the projects we do, because we've done sunflowers already, and that was a lot of fun. I am super happy I started this art club. It has been super successful. The kids are so excited about it. They come and they, they talk about it all the time. They talk about it through the day. They talk about it with their parents. So I know they're super excited about it. So for whatever reason, this art club has just meant a lot to the kids. And it's just been super fun. So I'm, I'm really glad I started it. With photographer Tiffany Jackson, this has been Paige Pearsall for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Well, Madeline, I hate to break it to you, but those kids' drawing were definitely better than your stick figures. Hey! Okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Apache Elementary had a jumping good time at a PTA fundraiser at Sky Zone. That sounds more like a fundraiser to me. <laughs> Let's just bounce right over and take a look. Apache Elementary School recently held a PTA fundraiser at Sky Zone. The Apache Elementary School PTA is doing a fundraiser at Sky Zone. I have three kids, um, two of them are in elementary school and go to Apache and one goes to Shine Mission South. Oh, they were very excited. There was lots of tears when I told this little one she couldn't go. So there was lots of excitement about this trip. Yeah, it definitely increases. Um, today is actually a little slower than normal, um, but if we do have a fundraiser, we normally get about 40, 50 more kids than we normally would. So fundraisers happen maybe one to two times a month, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Just really depends on the schools and stuff. Yeah, uh, the school gets a nice profit from it and just helps them out. Also helps Sky Zone out and it's sort of just a family business, family environment, so it's pretty cool. Um, it's easy and convenient, uh, a lot of fun. All the kids love it. We have a great staff here, great environment. Um, my favorite activity is uh, making stuff. With photographer Julian Cadello, this has been Tommy Hedden with Encounter Shawnee Mission. <laughs> Man, all those puns earlier really have me flipping out. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> hey, do you ever play video games? I don't have the hand-eye coordination for that, but students at Westridge Middle School do. Let's play. <laughs> the school day may be ending, but the fun is just beginning at Westridge Middle School as students prepare for a gaming club with Officer Harrison. You know, I thought it was a great idea. I know a lot of kids come to school and they're very excited about video games, they're always talking about video games. And so when student came to me and said, well, can you sponsor the video game club? I jumped on it. I just thought it was great, a nice place for kids to come and have fun after school for a little while. Uh, this is our third week. It's grown every week. We started with 26 uh, students the first week. Last week we had 35 students. This week we have 41 students. So it's been great. Well, the thing I like the most is that everyone here is a community because here there's like a big community of n over 900 students and it's great to build friendships while you can. I just love providing a place for the students to have a good time. You know, I, the students love video games. I have a lot of video game stuff in my house that was collecting dust. I've brought it in so now they can enjoy it and have fun with it for a little while after school. It allows students to get to know each other. A lot of these students, they don't know each other. They just come to this club and now they're mingling, they're making new friends and they're playing games. They're sharing, you know, an interest that I think a lot of people want to do. So I think it's great. I really love watching the kids interact and have a good time together. That's what it's all about. This has been Charlie Jansen with photographer Evan McNeely Phelps reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Man, I just might have to break out the old Mario Kart after that one. Oh, it's on. <laughs>
but I'm so tired. I stayed up all night binge watching Grey's Anatomy. Why do that when you can go to the Center for Academic Achievement and start studying medical science yourself? Good idea. Let's go see what those future doctors are up to. Students at the Center of Academic Achievement are working hard to expand their knowledge of the medical field. I teach Medical Science 1, which is completely different than Medical Science 2, completely different things. Medical Science 1 is the application of anatomy and physiology. Generally, that's what that is. It's a medical terminology class where we talk about the diseases and disorders of the systems, and then students learn how to recognize signs and symptoms of those diseases and disorders and how they relate to the body systems themselves. Students, when they're 15, don't really know necessarily what they're interested in at 20. So if I could create a course connected to healthcare, but allowed students to develop professional skills also that they could use in something else, then they could try on our course, for example, to see if healthcare was something that they liked, and if they didn't, still have something to take away. The classroom has a lot of high-tech equipment to help enhance the learning experience. Okay. It's not a typical classroom. We're able to do a lot of hands-on stuff with the dummies, the test subjects. And then we're able to uh, also just learn how to do a lot of hands-on features and stuff like that. So ever since I was like a little girl, I've always like had an idea of wanting to be like some type of doctor. And um, I've heard a lot of people tell me like good things about it. So I just thought that would be one next step to get to my higher career. With videographer Madeline Patterson, this has been Elena Wellock reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. You're right, some things you just can't learn from a medical drama. <laughs> Told you so. Dr. Gray will have to wait. <laughs> well, this has been Encounter Shawnee Mission. I'm Holly Jackson. And I'm Madeline Patterson. See, See you, you next time. time.